The patriarch fishermen really know what the heck is going on. And um, so I talked to him. I spent a lot of time with him. When I realized that Will is a marine scientist, I told him all about this place, which is Gladden Split. I told him there was a huge number of snappers spawning out there with whale sharks swimming. There's a couple of guys that really understand this thing really, really well. Eloy Cuevas is one. And these guys have been absolutely dedicated to understanding these dynamics and are now willing and able to participate in helping me and others understand them such that we can all work together to try to conserve them. What, what has been happening in Belize is that a lot of our spawning banks have been slowly uh, dying out and so we saw a need uh, to protect them. You know. When we declare marine reserves, we we say that we are using them as fisheries management tools because one of the objective of declaring marine reserves should be to enhance fisheries in the adjacent areas of that marine reserve. Uh, we took some fishermen from southern Belize up to some of these marine protected areas up in the northern part of the country and um, we snorkeled out there and there were so many fish there that really blew the fishermen minds. And um, that gives the fishermen them a good chance to see what a good marine reserve looks like and that encourages them even more to work harder to make this place a marine protected area. And Eloy Cuevas had the trust and confidence in me to take me there and show it to me. We were able to draw graphs of the annual abundances uh, of reef fish at certain places based on you could say anecdotal information, but it's fact, okay? These guys live it, they know it, they work it. The mutton snappers aggregate to spawn in April and May every year in massive quantities, and they're there to fish them, and uh, this is how that project began. Many years ago, I go to Emily for groupers, and no, I don't know if you could get a grouper in Emily. Those days are gone, that's overfish. And we are pretty lucky to get a lot of fish, so we gotta preserve what we got so we could last for a longer time on those rest of the island. It's been very, very obvious to every single person involved here at Gladden Spit that this is a crucially important phenomenon for the social and economic well-being of the people who live here. This place is worth more money intact than it is if fished out commercially. It's not that complex. Everybody figured it out and everybody is supportive of that vision. Most of the time here in Belize is, is the community try and um, put things to the NGO of what they want. For instance, marine protected area, a lot of the communities now, they're asking for marine protected area to set up in in their in their area so they could be benefit one way or the other. They need to see the economic benefits where they, they actually have a, a tourist in their boat and they're making some money. When they realize that they can make more money, uh, with less stress with the tourists and going to fish to the sea to fish because going to those high seas is not it's not an easy job right then they will begin supporting this kind of initiative and so I think that once people taste uh, this new uh, ventures you know they can go into there they, they will support it fully I am a fisherman and I mostly um, sport fishing now but I used to be a commercial fisherman that used to fish these aggregation sites as well but then um, over the years of um, working all up and down this reef looking at spawning aggregation life has changed you know you learn to different ways to make your income and um, I think a lot of people could do the same you know you gotta think about protect and preserve something that you could have for your kids and their kids before you just use it in a very destructive way and then you lose it. And uh, the program was put together because of um, trying to get some of the fishermen involved with, with other areas of income instead of fishing. And I'm proud to say right now that most of those dive masters are working very successfully as dive masters right now in some of the same areas that they used to fish. Commercial fishing I used to do with my dad. And I used to do hand line fishing and um, I used to set seine. Before they were a little bit reluctant, in, especially the fishermen, because they didn't see the positive side of it. You have to 
go through a few years for fishermen because I'm one of them as well. So I know how they think. You have to go through a few years for them to see actually what is the positive side of creating a marine reserve, the benefits you get out of it. They are now seeing the benefit that they are getting from it. There's much more people coming into the area. The economy of all the communities is growing quite rapidly surrounding this phenomenon that we have here right now. I think it's it's something really amazing to work out here. You're seeing stuff that you never imagined. I work as a research assistant. I do underwater filling and as a boat captain also. And I really like doing the underwater filling. That's something that I really, really love to do. Fly fishing, from, for commercial fishing, I think fly fishing is really good because uh, you're not carrying down the, the fish stock and you're catching and release. You're catching and you could come back and catch the same fish that you release. In December 2002, the Minister of Fisheries of Belize closed to fishing 11 traditional spawning sites in Belize. This was possible because of the involvement and endorsement from the Belize fishermen who understood that eliminating the spawning allegations was equal to eliminating the fisheries that sustain them. Most of the fishermen at first, when they heard about marine protected area, they all used to believe that it was a place that they wouldn't be allowed to go in and fish anymore. So most of the fishermen, they were against marine protected area until when they went and look around in some of these different protected area in northern Belize, is when they really understand that there's different activities that rises from this marine protected area and give you a different um, different way of making an income. In, it's, it's not just fishing. It could involve tourism and a lot of different activities that you could get involved with. Our, our snappers are still in a fairly good health. You know, not, We have not depleted them completely. And hopefully by having these new reserves, these new laws now, we'll be able to bring back a bring them back as they were initially.